What's up, everybody? It's Darkstrider, the YouTube assassin, and today I'm bringing you a Persian Elite build, which we got these gears from the DLC that just dropped on Tuesday, The Legacy of the First Blade, Episode 1. On top of having those gears, we also have weapons that came out with the DLC. All right? This is going to be a crazy build. It's going to be a warrior assassin hybrid. It's going to have fire splashed in. And it's going to be an adrenaline monster. You're going to be able to gain so much adrenaline with this thing. And let's just get into the build. So first up, we have the Pride of the Lion, which is a sword that we got from the DLC. Now, as you can see, it has 19 assassin damage, 21% adrenaline per hit, which is fantastic. And then it also adds Rush Assassinate ability chains to one more enemy. So that means that whereas... The original Rush Assassinate, if you leveled it up all the way, you'd be able to strike down four enemies. This one gives you one more. You won't be leaving that last guy standing. You'll take him out too. That's pretty awesome. Plus, you can get a trophy if you do this thing, if you actually hit all five people. So I added 100% damage, but health capped to 25%, which is something I add on most of my Assassin builds. But... If you're not comfortable with that, you could add something else. You could add some sort of uh, extra critical damage. You could add extra firepower, extra poison power, whatever you're comfortable with. All right. I just use this just because I like the extra damage. Moving on to the next one, Edge of Time. N another 19% assassin damage, 21% adrenaline per hit. So now look at this. We're at 42% between the two weapons. All right. So that is absolutely amazing already. On top of that, reduces all cooldowns by 10% on a successful parry. If you don't know how to parry, please practice it. Go into a fortress naked on nightmare mode and just keep dodging, keep parrying. Just hit that button so that that way you practice it. Because just imagine how quick you're going to be able to get all your abilities back after you have a successful parry. 10% is not a lot. But it's big time when we have other things going on, and you'll see what I mean. I also added plus 10% to all adrenaline gain, so just think of that. If we have 42% adrenaline per hit already, you add another 10% to that, I mean, it, it's a no-brainer. You're, you're gaining adrenaline at an amazing rate. So we just need all those abilities to be available. So that's why we have you know this cooldown, and we're going to have other things that will help that out too. Going on to the bow, I really had no use for a bow. This uh, build is not going to be using bows at all. So even though we have it, I added this for fire damage, basically. So it has 19% warrior damage, 28% fire damage. Basic arrows become fire arrows. And I added 20% health and armor, so that, that way we're not as squishy if we decide to stick with the 100% uh, uh, damage, but health cap to 25%. So that's why I added this, all right? Other than that, bows aren't useful right now on this build. Maybe you find a use for a certain bow. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. Also, you could add whatever you want onto this. More poison, more fire, or what have you. Uh, critical hits, headshot damage, whatever, if you decide to use a bow with this build. All right? And you don't want to use the 100% damage, but health cap to 25%. That's up to you. All right, moving along. We actually have the Elite Band, which we got from the DLC yesterday. The rest of this gear is all from the DLC. As you can see, 90% warrior damage. The fire damage is not so good right now because we have to build it up because we just got this here. But again, if we build it up, we're going to have another 28% fire damage, which is going to be killer. All right. I added 15% damage with warrior abilities just because we had so much assassin damage. As you can see, I have 191,341 assassin damage if you look at the bottom of the screen. And the warrior damage is only 21,159, which is weird. I don't know how I always end up with more assassin damage. Anyway, plus 40% damage whenever time is slowed down, which is part of this set. Now... Just imagine that if you use the slow time ability, which I rarely use, damage is increased by 40%. Add to that the 100% damage, you've got a killer combination there. On top of that, through trial and error, I discovered 
that this slowdown ability actually adds to this cooldown here. It also it, it it reads it like a successful parry because time is slowed down. When you parry, time slows down. So this is actually kind of amazing. Like I I, I did it like all day I've been trying this out and I'm absolutely blown away at the damage. So now going over to the elite arm guards, another 19% warrior damage. 3% adrenaline per hit. Now this will increase. Uh, the only reason it's not there is because it's brand new. So once we get that, let's say it's a 21%, now you're looking at 63% adrenaline per hit. You're a monster at this point. I added to this 30% total armor, again, because we're squishy. You don't have to add the armor. You could add poison if you're trying to make this a poison build, fire or what have you, whatever works out with this add it if you if you want full health and you don't want to add this total armor i on the chest guard i have 19 percent warrior damage five percent crit damage it comes with that crit damage could actually increase all right as you can see we're only at the beginning with the crit damage there and then over here 25 percent adrenaline on assassination kill which can increase so now just imagine that an assassination kill for 25%, we're building that up. We're building up some serious adrenaline here if you just run and hide for a little bit. The Elite Belt, it has 19% warrior damage. It has a 1% crit chance right now. That's going to increase. Again, this is a brand new thing. We'll work on it. But I added 6% adrenaline per hit, which will also become 21% adrenaline per hit. So now we have how many items that have this? that have the potential to increase with this thing. It, let's say all of this, these two pieces become 21%. These two pieces become, or well, they are 21%. So now you have 84% adrenaline per hit just for smacking somebody in the face. You smack them in the teeth and boom. You, I mean, how, how much more can we go? We just have to increase this right now. That's the problem. We have to work with this build so that it keeps increasing and it gains the adrenaline per hit. And then we go to the Greaves, 19% warrior damage, plus 1% all damage. Again, we have to work on this so that that all damage increases. And then I added fire damage, which again also has to increase because you can see on the right hand side, it's missing two dots. That'll get it to 28%. It'll be a, a complete beast. All right, as far as abilities go, and again, you know, I want you all to understand that I have all these abilities here because I'm working on multiple bid builds constantly. All right. So don't mind the mess. All right. I do have points in the masteries, but this is a complete mess just because I'm always, you know, going through builds and everything like that. On top of which you can reset these abilities and all your points that you get in the upper corner over here are only going to be ability points that you placed in this spot. If you go into the mastery levels, whatever points are in the mastery levels, after you wipe all these ability points, whatever was in the mastery levels stays in the mastery levels. You physically have to go into the mastery levels and actually reset those abilities to gain the ability points back from there. All right, so... Just think about that, you know, just in case you didn't know that, you can switch back and forth, but those will stay in the spots where they were unless you do something back here and you, you change these abilities and you swap them into there and vice versa, all right? In this scenario, with this build, I, I probably wouldn't even use any of the bow uh, or the hunter abilities at all because it has no need for hunter abilities. I'm not using the bow at all, all right? What I am using, typical assassination uh, stuff. I'm using Shadow Assassin. I'm using Critical Assassination. When I'm assassinating, it does extra damage if you hold the button down. All right? Stealth Master, we become a shadow. We're just hiding and stuff like that. On top of that, we're using the Rush Assassination. All right? This now could hit five times. So just imagine, you're, you're murdering five people at the same time, Every time you do that, it counts as a uh, just an adrenaline gain. So it's going to be helpful when we're out hiding, all right? Shadow of Nyx, 
I use this when we're hiding after using Stealth Master. We could use this to stay completely invisible and maybe move away so that we could regroup to what we want to do. And like I say on all these builds, the only way they're going to see you is if, like in this animation, you see you're standing in the road. If the guard ran into you, then he would see you because he's on top of you. Another way is if they have animals, the animals can sniff you out. So avoid animals as well. All right. This build, I actually added slow time, which I never use. Now, the reason for that is because of the weapon that we have. All right. Um, this reduces cooldowns by 10% on a successful parry, which is just amazing. And then uh, I think that there was another piece of gear that actually had something like that. Well, yeah, well, the gear itself, 40% damage whenever time is slowed down. So, you know, that's another reason that we added that, which is absolutely amazing. Now, I've been playing with Death Veil. It's actually really cool because any assassination technique you use, the enemies automatically disappear. Their bodies are gone. They vanish. All right. You can also get a trophy or achievement for doing this 10 times with this uh, ability active. And it only has one rank, which is kind of weird to me. I, I, but I could see if it does that damage immediately, there's no really, uh, there's no real reason to have any more ranks in it, but it's whatever, you know, I just added that there. Now, Hero Strike, it's a staple of mine. I like to use it. I like to, you know, just whack people and, and have them go down in one shot. Uh, it, it's a form of control, which is great. We don't need Call to Arms, all right? Call to Arms, it, I mean, it's fun, but it's not really going to count as an assassin ability. We don't really need to call our lieutenants. The same thing with Vanish. You really don't need to Vanish. This build is going to be just psychotic. And a lot of the warrior abilities are going to help us to disappear when we need to disappear. So that's unnecessary as well. Revelation really isn't necessary. I just like to add it to my build so that I can see all the secrets that are around me. Or if there's an enemy around and I missed it, I could see what level it is and stuff like that. Or even if I didn't see an enemy there and I hit it, it'll let me know that an enemy is nearby. All right. But still, it's not necessary. All right. Warrior... I like to use the charged heavy attack. In this build, it's unnecessary. All right, what is necessary is second win is something that I always put on. All right, that's, you know, uh, on every build, um, especially when you're squishy. Ring of Chaos is going to be crazy. This is really going to help us out when we have a lot of enemies around this. It's a form of control. So we're going to use it. All right. Weapons Master and Gear Master both increase our armor and our weapons ability. And in this case, it increases the crit chance with all weapons by 10%. All right. Uh, and then it also, as you can see, combo finishers deal more damage when the combos contain both light and heavy attacks. Over here, Gear Master, your armor increases by 90%. Somebody shooting arrow at you, the damage is 10% is is less. less. And then there's a 10% chance that an attacking enemy will stagger, which I did a live stream a couple of days ago where I was parrying with my uh, bow as I'm using the bow and arrow. And somebody questioned it and I found out it was because of this. It, they attacked and they, they were staggered is what really was. It, they, I didn't parry with the bow. They just got staggered when they attacked. And I was amazed at how often that, that happened, even though it says 10%. It was happening, you know, uh, like half the time almost. Overpower attacks. This is, you know, just something that you have just to have fun with. We're, we're going to be building so much adrenaline that we'll be able to do overpower attacks and bring our adrenaline right back. I had no, absolutely no time where I was without any adrenaline in my, in my bar. So it's absolutely amazing. Battle Cry of Ares. We're going to use this because... It, just like it says, in a fit of godly rage, all attacks inflict 50% more damage for 20 seconds. So that combined with some of our gear, some of our weapons, we're doing some serious damage. And that's absolutely amazing. That helps out. That helps us kill whoever we want. And, you know, in this case also, we're going to be able to have a lot of control when we're using the uh, Ring of Chaos. All right. Over here, we have flaming attacks. Now, I have both poison and flaming active, all right, F with 
flaming attacks and fire mastery, you're able to do all this amazing fire buildup, you know, burning duration, fire damage. If you're going to use the poison version, it's the same thing as the uh, burning damage, except it's with poison instead. All right, so you choose how you want to play this build. You could either have this here, the, the poison, or you could have the fire, or you can have both. I was actually using the poison for a little bit because for this week's weekly, we actually have to go and kill, I think it was like 30 Spartans with uh, poison damage. And it could either be with the sword or it could be with the bow. I did a video where I shot him in the head and it actually worked. So it's either or. And uh, that's why I added this. So it was a lot of fun to me. Now, let's go back to the inventory. Let's take a look at the stats now. All right. So even with the assassin damage being so high, warrior damage wins out here at 255%. Assassin comes in second at 179 Hunter at 141, but it, like I said, it's unnecessary. Damage with headshots, 204. Normally when I have these builds and I have Hunter builds, it's like about 240 or better. All right? Coming over to the critical hits, 105% down the board, 16% critical hit chance down the board. All right? We're not going to have to worry about critical hits. This is going to be like a, a control build if we're not being sneaky. Our armor bonus is 140%, which is great. Like I said, we're squishy. 20% health bonus, which is also great because our, our health is, you know, at a quarter. And range resistance is at 10%, which is also good because, you know, just in case we're getting hit by an arrow, but it's not going to happen often. Now, the elemental modifiers, we have 92% fire damage for 15 seconds with 160% buildup. All right, whereas poison is 25%. 18 seconds, 160% buildup as well. Now, I the, the poison duration is, is crazy. Poison, for some reason, always wins out on these things, except that we added so much fire uh, power to this. It's at 92%. Now, when we fix those other gears, this is going to be even greater. It's going to be even better than 92%, which means it's going to be even harder hitting. All right? Now, adrenaline per hit right now is 61%. Okay? That's going to increase again when we fix these gears. Adrenaline per critical hit, 10%. Adrenaline on assassination kill, 35 Adrenaline on headshot kill, 10%, but it's not really necessary. We have no bow charging speed, no crouching uh, speed when, or movement speed when crouching. All right? Pay attention to these numbers here. I'm going to do an update, uh, an update video over here with these numbers as well as these numbers when I increase all the stats on this build. It's going to look something ugly. So, you know, right now it's going to be, you know, kind of cool looking. But later on, it's going to be even better. So we're going to run in here. Let's let this guy come in. And there's no trace of the body. So now, let's be a little bit more sneaky. See, now if I stood in front of that guard, he would see me. Let's get over to this entourage. Let's see what damage we could do here. All right, so now let's switch over to the uh, warrior. All right, so you saw how I was like really low on my uh, adrenaline. And now we're just gaining it back.
Wow, she just killed the leader. That wasn't good. So we use that basically for like control. Wow, this guy is nimble. Well, got desynchronized that I wasn't paying attention to the mercenary, but you saw how quick the adrenaline was building. Now, if we added all those other modifiers and we increased them, the adrenaline would build even quicker than that, all right? Meaning that you would just be unstoppable. We also want to improve on uh, our cooldown, all right? Go and just like attack as many people as possible and build up that, that adrenaline for the abilities and then just unload, okay? That's why I'm saying I'm gonna do an update video showing when I've got all those stats up because this thing could be something incredible. It is kind of decent as it is right now. It, it would be even more incredible like if we had all the numbers where we wanted all those numbers to be and I fully intend on doing that. Now, you may, you definitely need to be wearing this stuff so that that way you could actually increase all those abilities all right you want to practice as much as possible and like i said especially with the uh the parrying you want to make sure that you're parrying constantly because parrying is the key to this build it's actually going to do a lot of good stuff yeah let's go cause trouble with these guys again oh that guy almost saw me oh And there was our five, and we lost all our adrenaline. So now we just have to smack some people around a little bit. This takes no adrenaline. And we have adrenaline back. That's just some nasty damage. Gets people dizzy. We get out there. Slow time, just in case you have to. Let's get all that adrenaline back, why don't we? Have a seat. Here we go. This run is much better. There goes that mercenary that was causing me so much trouble. And if I really wanted to, I'd just run away and hide for a little bit. Actually building up these abilities a little bit quick. That's doing some serious damage. And whoever we don't finish off is actually being finished off by the fire. Get out of my way.
See, not even using the bow. That's the crazy part. And we like Battle Cry of Ares. Getting in the mix. Blasting people away. Just gotta keep making sure that we manually turn on the fire. But look at that damage. Wow. <laughs> okay. Didn't pay attention to that other mercenary, but that's the build. That did a lot better that run. But as you can see, a lot of control, a lot of craziness that went on. We just have to increase that adrenaline gain on those gears, plus the fire damage on those gears. And this, this would be nearly unstoppable. I'd have absolutely no problem on this if I did it this way. So let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think of this build? Really interested in the poison and, and think that I favor the uh, fire more, but you know, it's all part of like what I'm doing and stuff like that. I just like to test out a lot of different things. When I did add it with the fire build though, it did do a lot of damage, which was like absolutely incredible. I really did enjoy it. And I killed all my Spartans that I had to kill with fire damage. Now, this has the potential to hit hard. Like I say, I'm gonna do an update video where I'm gonna show you guys exactly what it looks like with all those stats increased. But for now, these are the stats that I've dealt with and you know, it's only gonna go up, all right? Keep an eye on it. Anyway, other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, it helps the channel out a lot. And just remember that these videos are the only time you're gonna see the assassin before he sees you. Thank you for watching.